I remember very well growing up at Benislow and my mum and dad's house was still there so anytime I go to Ireland I pass by and visit the graveyard and visit the house and I said to my wife that's where I was when I was a baby and I remember all these things very clearly. I remember also of course going to the National School and I remember Matty Gandhi teachers in Garvey. I remember Pat Carney as head teacher. I remember borrowing a bicycle outside the, the ball alley one time that wasn't mine and I fell off it and broke my wrist. You know, I remember all the things from Derry Mullen where I come from, like anybody, I'll never forget them. London for the summer of 1961. The purpose was to earn some pocket money. It was designated in my house that I would go back and join university and study dentistry. That summer turned into eight years which I spent in London. I joined Woolworths as a trainee manager um, and my first assignment was to the store in Oxford Street which was the biggest store in the Metropolitan District at that time. And, um, and Woolworths were a big, successful retail company that time. Um, and oddly enough, when I went through the training program, um, I returned to Woolworths in Oxford Street as the Deputy General Manager. And um, when I was there in the stock room, I used to cycle every day from Acton to Oxford Street. When I came back as Deputy General Manager, I had my own little car and was one of two people that could park under the building in a small car park. During that uh, time, I was in Ireland on holiday. Um, I saw a job advertised at the duty free at Shannon. I didn't really know what it meant. I went for interview, I was offered a job, and I decided to go home. I joined the duty free in Shannon at that time the assistant manager, I subsequently became the manager. Not because I was good, only because the previous manager was promoted. And I spent 14 years in Shannon, and after that time, the Irish government and the Dubai government did a contract to set up a duty-free at Dubai Airport. I was one of a team of 10 people who came here for six months. That was in 1983. During that time, I was asked if I would stay and run the operation. I retired and I did a contract to come to Dubai for two years. That two years is now in year 35. In our duty free here at Dubai, uh, it's owned by the government. They are very positive and the, the enthusiasm that time appealed to me. I thought this has to be successful. And our first year in Dubai Duty Free, our business was sales of $20 million. We had 100 staff. I'm happy to say that we still have 27 of those 100 staff working. We have 260 staff who have done more than 20 years with us. We now have 5,900 staff. And we had a business last year of $1.93 billion. To do that, what I sometimes bore people by telling them to do that, we sold 73 million pieces of merchandise last year. We did 27.1 million transactions on our registers. And we now have staff from 45 different nationalities. We have a policy, and it's not just we at Dubai Duty Free, it is the attitude of the government. Firstly, everybody is equal, and like 85% of the population of Dubai are from overseas countries. And um, we change a little bit the staff mix depending on the traffic that comes through the airport. If you look, for example, 15 years ago, we did not have any Chinese staff. We now have 693 Chinese staff because of the change in, in traffic. It's part and parcel of, you know, the cosmopolitan attitude of the, of the United Arab Emirates that it has to be all these different nationalities. The policy is that they work closely together, and we have found in the duty free that that works very, very well. I do think short stay is going to become more and more popular. I do think people want to travel with less luggage. They want to be available to, you know, want to be free to do different things and do them easily. The, um, 
different parts of the world produce different things. The current big rage, of course, is Chinese traffic. And if you look at Dubai Duty Free's business, and the Chinese traffic through Dubai Airport accounts for about 4% of the traffic, they account for 8 to 9% of our Dubai Duty Free business. There were 450,000 Chinese visitors overnighters to Dubai two years ago. Last year it was 660,000. The tourism and traffic in to Dubai, and I think this can be reflected in every country, last year there were 15.7 million visitors into Dubai. And that's steadily growing. You know, 10 years ago it was maybe 6 million. The projection in Dubai that by 2020 there will be 22 million visitors into Dubai. And that means, of course, extra hotels are required, extra buildings are being done, extra accommodation, transport. You know, in 2009, Dubai opened the most modern metro system in the world. There's a fantastic taxi service, there's a fantastic transport service, there's big ro roadways, highways, underpasses, overpasses. It all has to stay developing together. I did see it at home, I did see my dad you know, um, for many years tried to do various things and he was instilling it in us whilst we were young people. Now, it wasn't new to hear either. There has been a giving attitude in this part of the world for many, many years. Parts from this part of the world, finance has created thousands of water wells all over the world, for example. So it wasn't unique that Dubai Duty Free set up its own foundation. I had the full support of my chairman, His Highness Sheikh Ahmed, to do that. He approved that we could transfer a certain amount of our top line sales every year into financing the foundation. We created within Dubai Duty Free a department which deals solely with CSR and staff safety. We enthused our staff and we generally don't talk too much about the foundation, but we have supported 78 different charities. We have several, ch several children of special needs in schools. We pay the fees of school teachers in autism schools in Dubai. And for many, many years, we have supported the Jack and Jill Foundation in Ireland. I think um, prevention towns and rural towns in Ireland have great potential. I've often wondered about Banslow if the river still couldn't be used better from the point of view of tourism. I know these motorways bypass towns. I think that's not always a bad thing. I think very often it's a good thing. I think rural towns have to be developed more. It is nonsense if a city like Dublin just gets so congested that people cannot work properly there, have to spend hours traveling to work, cannot afford to live there. So I think all the manufacturing industry has to be spread out a little bit. You, you know, I know about Dublin, Cork and Galway, Limerick, busy places, but let's find something for Pan and Snow. I think very simply, and I always say that what's important is that you work hard, you work honestly, you treat people equally. And I might be totally wrong in this, but I also say to people, do not get overawed or totally dependent on technology. Your company has to be modern and quick, and you know, we have to handle 75,000 transactions every day, and we have to be technically up top to do that. But from a personal point of view, if you watch people going around pulling out iPhones, doing this, doing that, when they should be talking to somebody, it's nonsense. And I often say to people, I'm fortunate that I run the biggest duty-free operation in the world. That's 12 years old and that's what I use.